In a world bursting with flavor, innovation happens around the clock. New tastes, new recipes, and new trends drive customers' expectations. They're looking for finger-licking and delicious sipping experiences, wherever they are. Keeping up with consumer expectations is tough. That's why, at Nestle Professional, we work side by side with you to inspire and enable your success. Our intimate knowledge of your business, from schools, convenience stores and cafes, to restaurants and delivery, means we understand the balance between creativity and efficiency. We deliver intelligent food and beverage solutions, built on insights from the world's largest R&D networks and over 150 years of industry experience. A rich portfolio of trusted brands means high quality results at every serving, while our international team of chefs and baristas inspire with new combinations and flavor sensations. Together, we're defining the recipe for a brighter future. With nutritional knowledge, plant-based expertise, Chef and barista training programs, smarter, connected systems and responsible practices. We support our industry with the essential ingredients to make a difference. We're here to help you deliver and delight more and to leave your customers wanting more. In a world bursting with flavor, Innovation happens around the clock. New tastes, new recipes, and new trends drive customers' expectations. They're looking for finger-licking and delicious sipping experiences, wherever they are. Keeping up with consumer expectations is tough. That's why, at Nestle Professional, we work side-by-side -side with you to inspire and enable your success. Our intimate knowledge of your business, from schools, convenience stores and cafes, to restaurants and delivery, means we understand the balance between creativity and efficiency. We deliver intelligent food and beverage solutions, built on insights from the world's largest R&D networks, and over 150 years of industry experience. Our rich portfolio of trusted brands means high quality results at every serving, while our international team of chefs and baristas inspire with new combinations and flavor sensations. Together, we're defining the recipe for a brighter future. With nutritional knowledge, plant-based expertise, chef and barista training programs, smarter, connected systems, and responsible practices, we support our industry with the essential ingredients to make a difference. We're here to help you deliver and delight more, and to leave your customers wanting more. In a world bursting with flavor, innovation happens around the clock. New tastes, new recipes, and new trends drive customers' expectations. They're looking for finger-licking and delicious sipping experiences, wherever they are. Keeping up with consumer expectations is tough. That's why, at Nestle Professional, we work side-by-side -side with you to inspire and enable your success. Our intimate knowledge of your business, from schools, convenience stores and cafes, to restaurants and delivery, means we understand the balance between creativity and efficiency. We deliver intelligent food and beverage solutions, built on insights from the world's largest R&D networks, and over 150 years of industry experience. Our rich portfolio of trusted brands means high quality results at every serving, while our international team of chefs and baristas inspire with new combinations and flavor sensations. Together, we're defining the recipe for a brighter future. With nutritional knowledge, plant-based expertise, chef and barista training programs, smarter, connected systems and responsible practices, we support our industry with the essential ingredients to make a difference. We're here to help you deliver and delight more and to leave your customers wanting more.
In a world bursting with flavor, innovation happens around the clock. Hello everyone. On behalf of the Nestle professional team based here in the Beirut Center in Switzerland, I welcome you to our webinar on plant-based dairy alternatives, which is one of the hot topics in the beverage category. My name is Zoha Khurram. I joined the Beirut Center as a global category executive two years ago, focusing on the plant-based category. Overall, I have a decade of experience in coffee and other categories of the beverages. I am accompanied here with my colleagues, Anne, Manuel, and Christos, who are the speakers in this webinar and are experts in their respective areas. They will be introducing themselves shortly. We are very pleased to have you here. Thank you for registering. We hope that the content we share today is inspiring and useful to you. This session will be recorded, and then it will be available to you with the presentation if you want to listen to it again or share it with your colleagues or friends who could not make it here today. Just some housekeeping rules, uh, such as during the webinar, please type in your questions in the Q&A section and not the chat section. Um, and if you wish to also see the live transcript, please click on CC. We will be launching some polls as well, uh, and we would really like to hear your thoughts. So um, in order to set the context, before my colleagues really deep dive into their areas of expertise, I would like to briefly share what we will be talking about today. Anne, who is our brand communication and insights manager, will emphasize on some key figures regarding the plant-based global market, its potential, and the pace with which the category is growing. Then Manuel, who is the plant-based category leader for Nestle Professional, will guide you through the plant-based consumer profile, key motivations, why this category is relevant to them, and what are the mega trends that are driving this consumption behavior. Followed by Christos, who is the master barista, as well as the Swiss barista national champion, and soon competing in the World Barista Championship to be held in Athens this month, he will highlight the importance of coffee and coffee shops in driving the plant-based category and also share his expert barista tips in working with dairy alternatives. So let's get started. Over to you, Anne. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anne Minar, and I'm the Global Brand Communication and Insights Manager based here in Switzerland. I've been working in the food industry for over 20 years, in the past 10, I've been specializing in food service. So it's a pleasure to be here with my colleagues as we've been working on the plant-based category and specific developmental projects around the world over the past several years. It's great to be part of this webinar and to be able to share some of our learnings with you. So let's start by reviewing the overall category and understand the dynamics around the world. We want you not only to see the data, but understand why the plant-based category is rapidly growing at a global scale. So let's look and see what's happening in the regions around the world in reference to plant-based alternatives. So starting with North America, according to the International Food Information Council 2021 research in the US, it showed that two thirds or 65% of Americans reported eating plant-based alternative products in the past year. We also can see that sales of plant-based products are steadily increasing in the US. From June, 2021 to June, 2020, the category grew by 6.4%. Finally, according to the Plant-Based Food Association, more consumers are trying plant-based in the US. Its, its survey showed that 62% of sample households were buying plant-based products. Now, if you generalize that data across the whole country, this would represent some 79 million US households, increase from 61% in 2020. Now in Europe, 
in plant-based product uptake can be linked to a high number of consumers reducing their consumption of red meat. In 2021, statistics show that 46% of European consumers reduced their consumption of red meat. While we can see sales growth for plant-based category in the US is growing, in Europe, this growth is even more pronounced. The Smart Protein Project found that the value of plant-based food and drink sales in Europe grew to 3.6 billion euros in 2020, a growth of 49% versus the previous year. In particular, the plant-based movement is especially strong in the United Kingdom, where a 2023 study has shown that 14% of adults in the UK are following a meat-free diet. And to end our global tour, when looking at the Asia Pacific region, we see that in 2020, Australia saw a 46% rise in plant-based product sales. The region's plant-based market is expected to grow by almost four times between 2020 and 2030. There is additional evidence that has direct implant on plant-based acceptance in the region. A 2021 study found that two thirds of the population in the Asia Pacific were lactose intolerant to some degree. So plant-based alternatives are a nice fit to fill their needs. Now plant-based beverages have been around for a long time. The earliest mentions of soy milk was written in Chinese from, was found from 1365. Almond milk was commonly used in the Middle Ages across the Christian Islamic worlds, and coconut milk has been used as one of the main ingredients in Southeast Asia, South Asia, Caribbean, and Northern South America for centuries. And of course, even for thousands of years in some places such as India. So even though plant-based beverages have been consumed for centuries, the plant-based category has been, going under, has been undergoing explosive growth in the most recent years. As a wider range of plant-based alternatives are emerging, more people are starting to incorporate plant-based products into their diet. This variety in turn drives further growth and awareness within the market. So by the end of 2026, the total category is expected to be worth some $21 billion. So while more competition means better prices for the consumer, there's an interesting factor that's worth raising. Historically, plant-based has been more expensive than its milk counterpart due to several reasons such as production costs, market access, and many other points. However, a new study conducted in the UK by the market research firm IRI suggests that the price gap between dairy and plant-based is converging and fast. But why is that? Well, a recent spike in inflation has led to a growth of dairy production costs. Combining this with the fact that consumer interest in high quality products is also increasing and they're willing to pay more for it and the retail price naturally rises. So why is that relevant? Well, this with the category becomes more accessible to consumers, gaining a competitive advantage by significantly reducing barriers to entry for the category. Considering that inflation has also affected the plant-based market in a lesser scale, and with more plant-based brands entering the market with different types of ingredients, the price gap between the categories has started to converge, and we can see that on the chart. Now, let's take a look at how the category is performing globally out of home. So out of home is a holistic view of all food service channels, which includes coffee shops, cafes, bakeries, convenience stores, restaurants, hotels, offices, and other food service channels. A recent study and internal estimates indicate that globally, in the out-of-home environment, roughly one in four cups of hot white coffee and one in three cups of cold white coffee are made with plant-based ingredient out of home. Now, as a quick note, for those who aren't familiar with the term white coffee, it's all coffee beverages that are served with milk, so cappuccinos, lattes, or flat whites. So globally out of home, we're looking at significant growth for plant-based white coffee beverages. Cold white coffees are growing about 18% and hot plant-based beverages are growing around 25%. So this information is a clear indication of the strong momentum the plant-based beverage category is experiencing. 
So looking more closely at the graph, we can see that there's some valuable information about the plant-based growth by the different regions. This graph shows the growth of 2020 to 2021 of plant-based white coffee recipes worldwide. Hot coffee is indicated in blue and cold coffee is in white. These numbers are really exciting. Looking at Asia, white coffees have double digit growth with hot plant-based white coffees growing at 15% and 24% for cold white coffees. We have exponential growth in Europe with 33% increase in cold plant-based white coffees and 14% for hot. Latin America is also growing with 18 and 26 growth for hot and cold respectively. In North America, I saw a balanced growth across hot and cold of 28 and 25%. And of course, in greater China, cold is growing faster than hot with a 16% growth rate. It's very clear from this information that we have, uh, the, that the plant-based category is really growing at a strong pace out of home and around the world. So there are several factors for driving the categories of growth. Just one of them is the increase of the ingredients diversification. We have moved from a market that was dominated by soy and almond milk for many years and even decades in certain parts of the world to the current scenario where we have a wide range of different ingredients being used. As more studies on nutritional health and environmental impact of the traditional plant-based ingredients are published, companies are becoming more aware about the possibility and range of the new options and consumers are interested. As a result, the diversification of ingredients is an important part to understand a strong momentum of the category. Now this graph is an example from Mintel, and it's a good example to show how this recent growth in ingredient diversification. This, in this graph, it tells us the frequency of plant-based drink launches in Europe um, and it's done by the share of selected ingredients. The time frame is from March 2017 to February 2022. It's important to highlight how strong the traditional market, how the market share of the traditional plant-based ingredients, such as soy, almonds, and rice, was very strong in 2017. And you can see the stark increase of diversification as of 2022. We can see that huge growth for oats and plant-based ingredients coupled with a decline for rice and soybean alternatives. So what can we learn from this? In summary, as the market expanded, our research on the base ingredients was done, published and shared. In turn, brands became more creative and leading to a launch of many new plant-based alternatives for consumers. Consumers are curious, open, and they're exploring different types of plant-based alternatives. So now we wanna hear from you. We want to get your reaction. Um, as Zoa had said, we have developed several polls for you to, to get your, your point of view. And our first poll is simply this. What is your preferred plant-based dairy alternative? You can choose from almond, pea, coconut, oat, premium nuts such as cashew or pistachio, rice, and soybean. So vote now. Okay, thanks so much for voting. It's great to have you to get your thoughts on this. So you can see from the results, almond had 30% and oat with uh, 33% were leading. Uh, coconut was in third place uh, with 18% of the votes. Premium nuts such as cashew and pistachio. Pea and of course soybean were also mentioned. Uh, rice is a little bit, it's not a favorite for the group today. So very interesting to see. So look, 
Thank you so much for your votes. And just wanted to reinforce that, look, um, to finalize this section, it just really states that we hope that with, this, with the data and the numbers that we shared with you, you can see that from a global perspective, a regional perspective, and in the markets, the category is really growing both in retail and out of home. And it really points to a pickup in growth, definitely not a slowdown. We're in a very exciting time for plant-based alternatives. And I hope you enjoyed some of the background as of the stage for the, about the category and its growth. Manuel and Christos will show you more reasons to believe why plant-based is here to stay. And I thank you all for your time. And I'll hand it over to Manuel. Thank you, Anne. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, joining us today for this webinar. And as Anne stated, we're looking at a category that's undergoing a serious boom uh, around the world. But um, before starting into this, just let me introduce myself. So my name is, as you might see on the screen, my name is Manuel Aleman, and I'm the category lead for cough ingredients and plant-based liquids and powder here in Switzerland, working for Nestle Professional. And sharing a little bit of myself, uh, I've been working in the food service industry for close to 20 years now. And what I like most um, is that I've, I mean, I've worked in several places and I've enjoyed and lived every single culture. So plant-based, um, I've lived and experienced in different ways. So it's a, it's a pleasure to me to work with this category and to be with you today, every single comment, I believe it's coming from personal experience. And I'm a, I'm a consumer of, of plant-based, their alternatives as well. So as we know, changes in consumer behaviors are shifting the way that we eat and the way we drink. So in line with this, plant-based dairy alternatives are becoming a very attractive choice for many consumers globally. So as part of today's webinar, I will guide you through these consumers. Whom are they and why are they shifting to a plant-based diet? Also, we will explore some more uh, of the trends that we see today, and we will deep dive into the future of this uh, amazing and exciting category um, during uh, my presentation. So let's start. Firstly, I would like just to raise a question to you all. So do you know or do we know what a flexitarian diet is? So to understand more about who consumes plant-based, and when I say plant-based, I said food and beverages. So we first need to understand the concept of a flexitarian diet. And in simple terms, the flexitarian diet is essentially an alternative to being vegetarian or vegan. And uh, ultimately it's grounded in wanting to get more plants or more plant-based ingredients into the diet that we all have. But listen, this is without ruling it entirely. So, and by doing so, they also prioritize their health needs. Um, for a clearer definition and having in mind the concept um, we discussed in the previous webinars, a flexitarian, it's a person who might eat, but it's not limited to a non-animal based diet. And this diet includes vegetables, fruits, grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. And this actually instead of dairy, milk, poultry, or even fish. However, this is not necessarily a meatless diet, as I said. And the term flex allows for some uh, flexibility. And with many people choosing to limit their consumption of animal products, rather than eradicating it. So moreover, talking about which generation are flexitarians, uh, recent consumer surveys have indicated that Gen Z and millennials, and these people, it's from, I would say, 16 to 44 years old, they are the largest demographics. And the most important for the plant-based category as a result. However, while these two generational groups have their own characteristics, they do share a number of similarities. 
and they are motivated by meaningful decisions. They aim to reduce the environment and social footprint, and they prioritize experiences over possessions. And this includes um, the car they drive, the clothes they wear, and uh, some other key behaviors that you might identify when looking at this generation. But I would like also to show a graph showing uh, how we see these uh, flexitarians in Europe. And I know we have people from different parts of the world and flexitarians are globally uh, known, but just only for Europe, we can say that in Germany, we have 27% of people that's following a flexitarian diet. But if we look into France or if we look in, in, into Spain or the United Kingdom, as Anne mentioned, there's also a lot of people following flexitarian diets. And sometimes there's people that are following flexitarian diets, but not necessarily aware that these are a flexitarian diet indeed. OK, so these are numbers that we have from studies, and we would like to share it with you as part of the webinar as well. So, so consumers choose plant-based beverages for a number of reasons. Anne mentioned a little bit on that in the first part of the webinar, but need a nutshell. Main reasons that uh, consumers choose plant-based are the ones that you see on the slide. So this includes health, animal welfare, sustainability, and even taste. And taste is something that I really like a lot. But the recent survey conducted by Inova shows us that the key drivers behind the category are so important. If you look at this chart, we can see that 53% of respondents mentioned health and well being as a driver. There's also uh, people uh, choosing um, that plant based diets bring variety to my diet and also. Uh, people that goes for the plant based because it tastes better. So pretty, pretty, pretty white, uh, but we can consolidate most of the consumer choices into these four key buckets. So if really we want to understand the plant based market, we need to zoom out a little bit on the category and ask ourselves about the mega trends affecting it. So we can identify three mega trends to focus on. And looking at the top, we have the growing focus on health and wellness that modern consumer have. And health and wellness have become a priority for many worldwide. So consumers are more proactive than ever about supporting their bodies, mind, through, um, let's say, a balanced uh, diet and lifestyle. After this, we must also consider the ever-increasing consumer focus on environment and sustainability causes. And it's not a secret that climate change is affecting our daily routines. And plant-based, it's widely perceived by consumers as a category that has much lower carbon footprint. And, and finally, flavor and taste. Consumers are demanding higher quality and better tasting products uh, than ever, I would say. And plant-based beverages products are not an exception to this rule. But what about the challenges? Because uh, every category has some benefits, but also challenges. And challenges um, are key important in this plant-based be beverage sector. So we have selected three, actually, that I would like to share with you. And uh, while taste and flavor together make up an important uh, mega trend, this is also a challenge. So more than 34% of European consumers saying that the sensory attributes of plant-based alternatives are the number one area that requires improvement. Um, and as I always comment, taste, for me, uh, and, and my colleagues uh, agree with this, taste is one of the broadest aspects in life. And taste is very complex to address, and this is influenced by plenty of factors. So preparing a plant-based alternative, it's also a challenge. So it's known that certain plant-based alternatives might not mix well with acidic beverages, such as some high quality coffees. And Chris, he will explain a little bit on this, but this is mostly related to performance. And surely 
we will cover, um, I mean, on the third part of this webinar, these key aspects. But moreover, in all propositions, we need to be sure that the plant-based dairy alternatives delivers the right balance and also offers a variety and versatility during the preparation. But finally, uh, referring to variety of applications, uh, and this is this is a concept that I uh, that I actually love. And sometimes you might heard uh, from my side saying it's also innovation by application. So plant based should be also linked to versatility, and the way we are able just to play and innovate with different products, propositions, and recipes in the out of home channels that Anne mentioned, but specifically in coffee shops. And after this analysis, let's take a look on the future of the category. So the category is moving towards improving taste, getting closer and closer to the ideal mouthfeel and flavor. And at the same time, it also ensures that it's providing um, our operators and customers with a positive consumption experience overall. Generally speaking, global, mar global markets reports um, that there's a, a continued growth year on year for a while now, and there are no signs of slowing it down in the coming uh, periods. But it's important to highlight that as uh, uh, the study that Anne shared, this category price gap with uh, its dairy counterpart, it's converting. So indicating that the category book, it's becoming more accessible to the general consumer. And this helps people entering the category and this category is becoming more and more attractive and accessible to new consumers. But there's also a space for continued innovation in this segment and it's amplified by the shift from a few options to a wider range of plant-based alternatives currently on the market. And I was traveling uh, to a specific country um, two months ago and the variety of plants and sources in this uh, product or in this category was really, really, really wide. And I saw plenty, I saw coconut, I saw pistachio, and I saw some other plant proteins playing an important role in shelf, but also in the out of form. So as part of the second poll, um, this poll is about listening to you on why do you choose to consume plant-based beverage so zoa um, and team if you launch the poll uh, and let's listen to the people why they're going for the plant-based So we have the results in front of us. So just let me read it a little bit through. So 36% of you says it adds variety to my diet, actually uh, from to my diet as well. So I'm in the kind of B as well. The 31% of you said it's healthier. I would select also healthier just uh, to bear with you. And actually it's sustainable, the third one. Yeah, second, third, so 32%. But uh, we need to improve on taste. Actually, you 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 say uh, something about the challenges that we have with the category. So, yep, 
uh, pretty sure some uh, work to do in all of the propositions uh, the industry has. So thanks uh, for being with me. So as part of the third part, just let me hand over to my good friend, and as uh, Sohan mentioned, National Swiss Champion Barista, Chris. So over to you, Chris. Thank you, Manuel. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and share our learnings with all of you. Um, as you already seen, my name is Christo Sotiros. I'm a master barista working for Nestle Professional uh, at the SBU team, and uh, I'm the current Swiss Barista Champion. Um, I'm also an AST trainer, and my main responsibility is to support our uh, coffee teams on the markets and our barista internal network to further develop their coffee skills and coffee capabilities. So to build up on uh, what the previous speaker said in the previous segments, we have learned how the plant-based category is rap rapidly expanding its consumer profile, trends, and its future. In this section, I would like to further explore the opportunity that exists for the coffee shops. In a nutshell, I want to describe the route to market that coffee shops must follow to successfully add plant-based to their menu and how to innovate. So moving to the next slide, firstly, we cannot talk about the current profile of a coffee shop consumer without linking it to the rise of plant-based. Gen Z and millennials are not only major plant-based consumers, but they're also loyal coffee shop consumers. This key uh, generational behavior, uh, it is a key generational behavior that we must take a note of. In this category, we can also see strong correlation between the momentum the plant-based beverage category is undergoing and its presence in several prominent coffee shops. Unsurprisingly, recent consumer surveys have indicated that 60% of consumers who have tried plant-based alternatives have done so in a coffee shop. And when looking at the out-of-home plant-based beverage consumption, it is clear that coffee shops, cafes, and bars are a popular arena. Furthermore, we can also see that a good amount of trend setting happens in the out-of-home industry. For businesses in this place, a plant-based offering is now a must-have, meaning a clear opportunity or barista versions of plant-based alternatives. These solutions don't just focus on the texture of the microphone for the latte art application, but also taste and flavor. It is important to ensure that the flavor of a plant-based beverage is neutral and that it does not overpower the coffee rather than complements it. So what are these consumer expectations? As we know, quality, choice, and service excellence has evolved in coffee shops. However, alongside the evolution, consumer knowledge has also grown, in particular amongst the Gen Z and the millennials. Consumers are demanding more sustainability and transparency than ever when it comes to the beverage they consume. They're also increasingly looking for authentic products. Coffee consumers are now making more informed decisions regarding their coffee beverage choices, particularly with the products they can add to them, especially plant-based alternatives. The average specialty coffee consumer has a solid general understanding of how the supply chain works. As such, it's, it is very important to them to know where the product the coffee shop is using comes from, as well as how it, was, it is made. So transparency from farm to cup is now a must have. At the same time, they still prioritize a positive sensory experience, meaning that taste and mouthfeel are just as important as ever. So people might wondering, why add the plant-based beverage to my coffee menu? First, it is, a clear, it, it is clear that there is a strong momentum for plant-based alternatives. Plant-based is not a trend anymore, rather than a reality. Secondly, by ensuring that the business is inclusive for all dietary requirements, you can open room for a whole new range of clientele. By doing so, you're not limiting the target audience of your business. In fact, you're doing the opposite, which is focusing on sustainable growth. And finally, looking around your region, 
see who is offering these products as well as who is not. The coffee shop market is highly competitive. And by doing some research, you might conclude that adding plant-based food and beverage could become a key competitive adv advantage for you and your business. So let's take a look uh, what the baristas are looking for. You can look at adding plant-based to your menu without considering the professional behind every beverage preparation, which is the barista. But what are baristas looking for when they work with a plant-based alternatives? Here, I would like to share a few thoughts based on my experience as a master barista, so you are able to plan ahead as much as possible. Let's start with texture and microphone. Mouthfeel is key uh, and is part of the positive drinking experience. And texture and microform are critical for this. There are a range of plant-based alternatives available that might not perform or be right for your beverage. The reason behind this is very simple. It's just, it is just might not be designed for coffee preparation because not all products form well uh, and they're not performing enough to create a stable microform for a cappuccino, for instance. Um, second thing to take into consideration, deciding which plant-based alternative to offer baristas also depends on the flavor profile in question. While some plant-based ingredients can be more neutral in flavor, others can have a stronger one. So go on and try a range and see which performs the best. Remember, some plant-based products work better with a certain flavor profiles. So for example, we know that oat pairs well with peanut butter while P pairs well with mint, for example. Um, third element that the baristas are looking for is versatility. You might find that one variant or product does not meet all your recipe demands. Be creative. Remember that plant-based needs you to come out of your comfort zone and think outside of the box. And finally, baristas must offer a holistic experience to its consumer. If your barista is not properly prepared and trained to brew, steam, serve, and explain about how you, your newly added plant-based offering, all the resources and time invested will have no value at all. So now we have a better idea of the main needs of a barista when working with plant-based ingredients. But uh, how, um, how do we address those needs accordingly? to ensure a smooth application. Let's start with one of the most frequent challenges baristas are facing when they start working with plant-based. That is texture and microfoam. To start with, it is important that baristas use plant-based beverages that are designed specifically for barista use. As mentioned at the beginning of this session, these barista formulas are designed to help baristas to prepare better beverages with these ingredients. When steaming a plant-based alternative, you should generally start with a lower air volume and gradually add more towards the end of the steaming process. And usually plant-based drinks need to be steamed for longer to create a stable microphone. Before serving or pouring, make sure you bang and shrill vigorously to help foam form. Now, when it comes to pairing flavors, there are a few tips that I would like to share with you. First one, avoid choosing plant-based beverages that are not naturally sweet. Second, chill your plant-based beverage of choice before every use. A third tip uh, is when developing a plant-based recipe, ensure that you pair the right coffee with the right milk. Some plant-based alternatives will not work well with more acidic coffees, for example, as this can cause the microphone to split and it won't look or taste good. So go on and run some pairing sessions with your team, develop the recipe and take uh, the feedback into consideration, both from uh, your barista teams and your consumers. I know the last point might sound too obvious, but taste the final beverage always before adding it to the menu. Make sure that your consumers like it. If the taste profile is quite off from what your normal consumers like, it might not sell. So please um, take also this into consideration. 
So let's move in and, and go through uh, a little bit more details on how to address these needs. In regards to the versatility and variety of application, there are a few tips that are definitely worth sharing. First, always communicate with the baristas. At the end of the day, they are the ones in direct contact with your customers and they will be brewing, steaming and serving the recipe. So make them feel part of the decision-making process. Second, while there are uh, a bunch of plant-based coffee beverages, remember that you can expand your vision to go beyond coffee. So what about the matcha plant-based beverage or a de uh, dessert or a pumpkin plant-based latte? Think outside of the box. Third element, don't limit yourself to only one plant-based source. Consider adding a range of diversity. Of di diversify. This will help you to develop new recipes and exciting flavor profiles. Be creative with both the recipe for the drink and how you present it. Develop a brainstorming process with your team so you can come up with unique recipes and uh, fun uh, and uh, innovative serving propositions. Make your beverages enjoyable so the creativity will naturally follow. Finally, the last topic here and one of the most important is providing a holistic experience to your customers. And this is critical. Always, but always train your staff for recipe consistency. It is very important to ensure your team is able to replicate the same recipe over and over again. This shows your clientele a high level of professionalism, expertise, and a commitment to customer service. When, you're sta when you start offering plant-based beverages, take a customer-centric approach. Remember, your staff should be trained to slowly and carefully introduce plant-based to those who are just getting started in this category. With the rise of the third wave coffee movement, one of the key jobs for coffee shops is providing coffee consumers with a positive customer experience. So be gentle, aim for the service, um, aim for the service excellence, understand your consumer natural preferences and make sure you provide a positive customer experience. Lastly, education and communication are key for any successful operation. Ensure there is a, steam, a streamlined communication channel between managers and service staff to avoid miscommunication issues. And make sure you know who is serving each day and ensure they're well-educated about any new plant-based additions to the menu. So it is time to upgrade your coffee menu to the plant-based reality. So far, we've explained the relevance of coffee shops to the plant-based category and how more consumers are demanding these products from their favorite cafes. We've shared powerful data which confirms the strong momentum of the category. And we've highlighted what baristas are looking for when working with plant-based ingredients and how to address those needs. So as you can see, all directions are pointing to a future with more plant-based beverages. It is time then to upgrade your coffee menu to the plant-based reality. And now we are going to talk about it, uh, about it and how uh, you will be able to do this. So as you've seen, there are a bunch of reasons to upgrade your coffee menu to include plant-based alternatives. However, the most important factors to consider is that it is a consumer-driven trend. We have reached a time where plant-based options are now considered essential to every menu. But how should you do it? How do you successfully add products like this to your menu? First, it is very important to know your audience profile. So conduct research about which plant-based alternatives you should offer. Is it oat going to be more popular than pea? Rice, coconut, or soy? Is your audience ready for a full plant-based transition or not yet? What about your clientele lifestyle? Do they have more outdoor or indoor lifestyle? Do they come to your coffee shop to sit down and relax or have a coffee uh, or do they order to go? These are some very important things that you need to take into consideration when you're profiling your target audience. Secondly, start by slowly but effectively introducing your plant-based alternatives to your audience. 
test before you launch. Don't overpopulate your menus with plant-based uh, if your audience is not ready for it. So take it slowly. And finally, one of the greatest ways to attract more clients is to innovate. However, we are going to have to expand and provide a bit more detail in the next slide so you can maximize innovation as much as you possibly can from offering a showstopper uh, signature beverage to all the way up to working with your staff to maximize recipe development. So leveraging the plant-based uh, through innovation, the plant-based category and beverages through innovation. Innovation is a word with a broad meaning. Most of the time, it is not easy to be innovative. However, we would like to guide you with a few ideas which might help you with the plant-based alternatives and coffee menu uh, structure. Generally speaking, innovation in the plant-based category relates to its different applications, thinking outside of the box and getting the most of, out, of it, out of the opportunity uh, that it uh, presents. A good example is developing signature drinks, delivering high quality beverages that customers enjoy and set your cafe apart and create memorable experience for uh, consumers. We've also mentioned previously that innovation goes beyond coffee recipes. So think of tea or think of sparkling beverages, think of cold drinks, chai, smoothies, and so on. There are plenty of options that you can play with to develop astonishing plant-based recipes. Seasonal drinks are also a great opportunity too. In the US, for example, selling pumpkin spice lattes and preparing uh, and preparing them in a very unique or different or innovative way can really set you apart from other cafes. One example we would like to share with you is the Blue November, which you can see in the right corner of this slide. Finally, remember that innovation is not just about recipe creation and development. It's also deeply connected to presentation. Make it remarkable, make it Instagrammable for your consumers and make it fun. Make that recipe something that your clients will remember, not only because of its taste, but also because of how it was presented. And don't forget, cold is the new hot. Since we're talking so much about recipe innovation, in addition to the Blue November, we have also added images of other fun and creative recipes that we hope will inspire you to innovate. In the top left corner, we have the agave oat cappuccino. Right below, it's our sweet cinnamon. And in the right upper corner is the peanut butter oat coffee. So I hope you are inspired by these recipes. And before we share the key takeaways for um, this webinar, we have a, a final poll for you. And we would like to conduct uh, um, this, uh, this poll with you. Uh, I would like to ask you, and we would like to know, which is your favorite plant-based coffee? And here you can uh, select by um, um, a, a multiple choice uh, selection of latte, cappuccino, any type of cold coffee, flavored cold coffee, meaning mix, mixed ingredients with the plant-based, or um, something else that you might have in mind. So the question is already available in the chat box. Take your time and go through the poll. Okay, let's just go through the results. Very classic uh, answers to <laughs> uh, very classic questions. So it seems that cappuccino is the most popular uh, beverage 
I think that makes sense as cappuccino is the most um, uh, espresso and milk-based beverage in general. So I think the uh, plant-based alternative version of it, uh, it also makes it very popular with uh, latte to be at 38%. And if we combine the two, any cold coffee and the flavor cold coffee into one cold coffee uh, plant-based category, we see also that um, uh, the percentage is uh, very high. So thank you for your answers and, uh, and your participating. I hope uh, you found uh, all this information very relevant and useful for you. And as we approach the end, I will uh, hand it over to Zoha to recap the webinar and close it. Thank you. Thank you, Christos, Manuel, and Anne for taking out the time today and sharing your valuable inputs. Um, as we move to the closure of the webinar, I would like to recap with the key takeouts. Uh, we saw with Anne that the plant-based category is gaining momentum around the world and that there is really no sign of it slowing down. The category is no longer only soy, almond, or oat. There is acceptance, actually demand by the consumer for variety diversification. And we can also see that in your poll, it was a popular uh, vote uh, that you require and demand variety in your diet. Uh, further off with Manuel, we saw that the plant-based category expansion is closely aligned with the new consumer lifestyle. When talking about plant-based consumers, we generally discuss flexitarians and early adopters. We saw with Christos that the majority of the consumers really try their first plant-based beverage in a coffee shop, which emphasizes on the role of out-of-home coffee in driving the plant-based consumption behavior. He shared the expert barista tips to overcome the challenges that are inherent to working with the category. And finally, he could not emphasize more on the criticality of innovating and renovating your coffee menu while working with plant-based beverages. Uh, do not hesitate to premiumize your offer and think outside the box and create a state-of-the-art uh, customer and consumer experience. So um, before we go to the question and answers we see in your uh, in the Q&A section, uh, we wanted to uh, have a final call out that we publish a lot of new news, uh, product launches, upcoming events and webinars, uh, even trend reports for that matter, uh, since there was a question around uh, trends and surveys. Uh, in the in the details that you can see on our global website as well as our corporate uh, LinkedIn account, please uh, follow us and uh, you will really stay updated with all this. So I think over to the, the question and answers. Uh, uh, and if there are any remaining question and answers, feel free to email us at uh, the ID that you can see on the screen. So one of the questions that we had we have one. Yeah. is about how would we analyze trends other than surveys? So I think Chris also did a great job of talking about what's happening in terms of the, the barista perspective. We do a lot of going out into uh, very interesting, creative restaurants, uh, barista uh, cafes, uh, coffee shops to see what's new, um, what are the new baristas are creating. Uh, chefs and baristas tend to be very creative in finding new, new ingredients, new ways to approach things. Uh, to make things much more ex exciting for their consumers. So we definitely go out and see what's happening in the space of uh, coffee shops, uh, bars, restaurants, et cetera. Okay. Anyone else have something to add? Just to uh, adding to that, yeah, from my side, we're all consumers. Mm -hmm. So we need to bear that in mind. We have our own preferences and we can shift as well what we want to drink when we're approaching some cafeteria. So, uh, as I always say, um, if you're going to a coffee shop, if you're going to a specific out-of-home place, share your thoughts with the owner, with the barista. Maybe he's not offering today because uh, no one has uh, demanded it, but uh, as we are all consumers, we can push for that. So it's one of my recommendations. Mm -hmm. Maybe next, let me take the question about how about uh, mixed coffee with dates? Yeah. Actually, this is a great idea. Dates is a, is a fantastic ingredient, uh, which you can use to add the natural sweetness to the beverage, replacing any uh, other sweetener or sugar. It can also give um, a different or alternative texture to a smoothie or something. So 
as we said before, think outside of the box, mix different ingredients. There are always some fundamentals, let's say, when building up a recipe, uh, which uh, in a sense that you would need to use some ingredients to add sweetness, texture, mouthfeel, to balance the bitterness or the intensity of the coffee, or to add some flavor. So yeah, don't 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 be scared. Uh, and, um, and and experiment with uh, building uh, new uh, recipes or creating new recipes. recipes. And uh, yeah, sometimes you might fail, but that's normal. Uh, and then you just need to, to calibrate and fine tune your recipes. But uh, actually uh, dates is, uh, is one of the ingredients that uh, uh, we are recommending and we are using uh, mainly on smoothies uh, or uh, other, uh, hot or cold uh, recipes and just to add to chris ross's point uh, as i was mentioning we do a seasonal campaign on recipes in our linkedin uh, profile so please do follow that and on our website as well we'll keep posting new innovative recipes that we keep trying mm -hmm. at the beverage center over here uh, we experiment a lot uh, we learn and we fail and we learn so but do do follow up on that so maybe that answers also the question if we can share the recipe for the blue number. Yes, exactly, so, okay. exactly. Yeah, Actually, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's already posted on, uh, on the LinkedIn. <laughs> we don't, we really don't. Sure. <laughs> so I think this uh, calls for the closure. Thank you everyone for your active participation. And uh, we really hope that you enjoyed and learned and were inspired and looking forward to uh, connecting with you again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. Have a great Bye. day.